Well, hello and welcome to another member Q&A session. This time we've added mailbox because we've still got stuff left over from last time. So even though I thought I'd done the last one of these, I haven't. So uh, Miss Hubnut, you may hear her rustling away as she opens packages. Um, I'm going to jump straight in with the, uh, I'm going to start on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Hubnut if you'd like to support that way. And uh, we shall start with a question from Francis Summerdaily. I heard today that Mitsubishi has been asked to withdraw from the European market in favour of their alliance colleagues, Renault and Nissan. Uh, I find it sad that smaller companies are being forced out. Mitsubishi will be sadly missed, in my family uh, opinion. Well, yeah, it, it is very sad, and please ignore the um, small aircraft that's buzzing around. Uh, yeah, it, it is a shame, because all these smaller, more independent companies do fall by the wayside. We've already lost Daihatsu in the UK, which was an even bigger blow, I think. They really did love doing their own thing. And I have great fears for Suzuki. Already the Jimny as a passenger car, no longer available in Europe. Uh, but the commercial version is available. Uh, but yeah, it's all a bit sad, really. Everything's just getting a bit too ordinary. Yeah, thanks for that noisy little plane. Uh, David Daly, any thoughts on Hubnut Social, including an auto jumble next year? Yeah, I would like to, but no firm plans. We will see what's going on with various things that are going on at the moment and see um, how we're getting on. Would an Alpha 159 station wagon not be the perfect everyday transport? Uh, 159's a bit modern for me. 156 I like, but um, they're all getting a bit leggy these days. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm... Not sure, I've dipped my toe into Alpha ownership before. Uh, sometimes it goes well, sometimes not so much. Pascal Schaff Rebergen, or Rebergen. Uh, hello, Mr. Hubner, I'm very interested in your Hugo Sana project, which is sitting at the back of the unit. Don't laugh, some people, some people are interested. That's the Sana. Oh, is that what's in there? Uh-oh. Uh, we will pause and do some items in a moment. Uh, this car is just so rare. In all the years, I've seen only one Sana driving around the Netherlands. Wow. Uh, how am I going to find parts, and will I be planning a trip to Serbia at some point for that purpose? Uh, yes, I think Serbia is likely to happen at some point, but um, obviously travel is a bit of a pain at the moment. It might mean that project gets put on the back burner a bit more than I'd hoped, but we'll see. Um, the problem is there's too many other projects to um, fix. I need to make this good for a start because uh, I've never finished poor Fox Anne really. Uh, Harold Dolheim, hey there. First of all, I have to say thanks for all the hours of entertainment you have given me in the last year. Oh, thank you, Harold. Uh, I'm into strange and special cars, especially from Eastern Europe. And most of all, Tatra. I would love to see you do a test of an air-cooled V8 like the 603. I've been very fortunate enough to drive a 603, sadly pre-video days extraordinary vehicles. I would love to do a video on one. Um, hopefully I can make that happen at some point. There's just so many cars I want to drive and trying to pick them and get them available and travel to them, all a bit problematic. Josh Woodford, first month for being a Hubnut Patreon after watching your videos for around a year. Love your videos. What's the worst car for tinkering with that has been part of the Hubnut fleet? Oh gosh, there have been so many. Uh, the, the Delica wasn't great. Um, I think mostly because I just didn't know my way around it. Whereas if you've got a socket set and a hammer, you can kind of work on a 2CV or a Reliant Fox and uh, it's all fine. Oh no, Miss Hubnut's laughing again. <laughs> that good, eh? <laughs> right, we'll get through the Patreon questions, then we'll do a stint on the mailbag and then we'll do the um, YouTube member questions. There are quite a lot of those as well. So you'll have to bear with us a bit. This isn't going to be short. Um, if you wish to get a cup of tea now, um, yeah, you can, you can pause and come back later. Uh, William Tever, how do you feel now you've introduced your partner and her children to the channel? Was the response you got from the video what you hoped for? Yeah, yeah, the, the, the response was great. You may have noticed I didn't love um, any comments on that one. That's because I manually approved every single comment on that video, just because I was a little unsure of it, about how it would go down, but it went down really well. People were very supportive, it's really good. If your partner and kids don't want to appear, um, just uh, William respects um, their privacy. Oh, the kids love it. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very amused. Any possibility of Diego and George meeting up or would that be disastrous? That has actually happened. That happened before I went off to um, New Zealand. We, we did actually manage to get them to meet. Uh, I think Diego mostly seemed terrified of George. 
And George seemed nonplussed. Jo jo George does look baffled. He's like, what is this strange creature? <laughs> I think you bought this here. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I wouldn't say they were loving friends, but they didn't fall out, so that was good. Uh, Graham Bentley, loving all aspects of your channel, and so good to see you happy with your new family, new unit, and so much potential for future videos and growth. Oh, and content, sorry. I wondered if with the growth of your channel, you'd ever consider separating the road test side to the fleet tinkering side. Um, I'm considering a second channel, but not for that reason. I think the road tests and the tinkering sit perfectly well side by side, so I'm quite happy to um, have them on the one channel. But yeah, we, we, I'm, I'm toying with a splinter channel to sort of focus on other things, a bit more maybe, a bit more in the music, uh, some of the stuff we get up to with the kids maybe. Well, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. It's one of those ideas. Uh, Colin B. Power over in Australia. I'm curious to know how difficult was it to learn driving Tuk with all its hand operated controls, the tiller and the push down braking. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go and have a look at Tuk. So yes, in the car control systems, you're, you'll have to bear with us. She's full of all sorts at the moment, including a didgeridoo, bizarrely, which I can't really play. Uh, but yeah, here are the handlebars. So um, it's a twist grip to go. You push down to brake and you obviously steer like you would steer any other vehicle. To be honest, I got used to that fairly quickly. There was one slight issue where I almost reversed out of the garage with, um, uh, I was trying to brake, but I'd held the throttle on and the engine easily overpowers the simple drum brakes. So that almost got very, very exciting. Now you can see my lovely didgeridoo. Um, no, I'm not gonna blow it, maybe. Uh, so yeah, it, I, I find it quite easy to get to, but I have driven so many different vehicles over the years. If you can drive a Model T Ford, which I did do at one point, I think you can drive pretty much anything. They are um, absolutely terrifying. Right, we shall get back to the questions. Uh, this is the last question on Patreon. Uh, Paul Watts sees that a lot of cars in New Zealand and Australia have tow bars. Is it a weekend run to the recycling yard or a day on the beach? All sorts, the, um, the Kiwis especially love boating. So um, the roads are full of boats at the weekends. Uh, that was something we went on a lot, but yeah, I mean, they tow caravans, trailers, uh, the um, Ford Fairmont, um, the one I bought, the previous owner had used it to tow cars around because they're great tow vehicles. But yeah, a lot of vehicles in New Zealand have tow bars. I think they're just a practical people and we shall, Take a pause from the old um, uh, Patreon and the questions to consider some mailbox happenings. Uh, I'll start with this one. Is this a clean one? Am I right yeah, with this one? Absolutely decent. Right. It's okay. Very lovely. There was all sorts in here. Yeah. What have we got? Oh wow! An AA badge with license holder. We don't actually need these anymore because. Uh, yeah, we don't have tax discs anymore. That's not how we display our license. Oh, it looks like pictures of an Allegro on the back. That's quite nice. Wow. And there's some luminous strips. I wonder what they're for. Be seen, be safe, be recognized. Oh, maybe they're just for sticking to your car or your face or something, I don't know. Uh, we've got Morris Minor Series MM Operation Manual. Uh, yeah, I wish I could describe the smell of that. Um, well, that's seen some um, use. So the MMs were the very first series of miners. Still with a side valve engine from the Morris 8. Uh, preparing for the road. Wow. I enjoy breezing through that. Um, I've only driven one MM, but it's a very notable one. It was the very first one ever built. Uh, a very lovely day at the um, what was then the Heritage Motor Centre, what's now the British Motor Museum, where they lost their minds and let journalists drive some of their cars for once. Uh, it was absolutely splendid. Uh, there's a letter as well. Nick, oh it's handwritten. Nick from Gateshead is what I'm saying. Ooh, car number plate spotter booklet is in here apparently, but there's also, um, oh an AA badge rather lovely. Uh, maybe I should put that on the front of Took. Oh wow, Morris Minor Workshop Manual. Uh, complete with the obligatory grease chart. This is for the MM Series 2 and the 1000. Yeah, so all sorts there. There's a, an SU carburetor diagram. Now I, I would actually seriously like 
a miner because um, when it comes to miner versus 2CV, I would far rather have the 2CV, but that makes me wonder whether I couldn't make a miner more enjoyable. You know, what do I like about the miner over the 2CV? Better handling, sorry, the 2CV over the miner. It's the better handling, the better brakes. So um, I'm sure something could be done there. I love the A-series engine, so I think that'd be um, absolutely fine. So, oh, this, there we go. There is the number plate spotting guide. Now that's going to come in very useful because a lot of people have asked for um, uh, a video on um, number plates and uh, this, this covers the pre-1962 ones, I think. Um, yeah, well, that's going to be massively useful. I'm going to put that there because I'm going to do a number plate video and tell you what these characters mean. That will definitely happen one day. Thank you. Uh, where's this package come from? It's come from Kevin Wolf in Australia, New South Wales. And it is, oh my gosh. Oh, I think I need to get that out, really. I think you need to see what this is. Oh, it's just in another box anyway. Doesn't seem all that attached to it. It may have lost a wing mirror. Oh, yep, there it goes, in fact. Oh, it's, it's come adrift from its mounting, but uh, yeah, it is a, a Ford Fairmont. AU model and he's actually put the number plate on uh, that she wore during my ownership in New Zealand that is uh, amazing and uh, a little plaque at the base says Betty so it has suffered a little in transport uh, I think it, that was the bit that fell out that's just part of the base plate but uh, oh you have the wing mirror well done uh, we, we'll glue that back on. That has snapped off in transit, but wow. Oh, now that's just making me want Betty again. That is amazing. Thank you ever so much. Uh, that was uh, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. I'm just going to put that down gently over here. There. Yeah. It's all good. Right, what have we got from China this time? Never know what's going to turn up from China. Beard growth oil. Uh, that, that's, um, that could be well timed because I've just had a trim and uh, yeah, obviously I need a bit more. Someone's missing the petrol head look. So thank you for the beard growth oil, whoever that was. That did make me chuckle. Yeah. What have we got here? Please find enclosed an item which I hope you will find useful in future tinkering. It's a metrink socket. It avoids any possibility of rounding the corners. Oh, I see. Oh, they're quite um, lovely. Oh, it's sealed in the packet. Well, I'm going to unseal it just so I can show you what's going on in here. Take a look down the bores, if that's going to focus. It may not. There we go. Yeah, that looks very interesting. I look forward to seeing whether they work. 16 mil is going to be an interesting one. Uh, 17 mil. Oh, I see. They're metric or imperial. Uh -huh. well, we'll see how that goes. One of them's definitely 10 mil. I can confirm that much. Uh, I'm going to put that down there uh, with that one. That's come from uh, Howard Levert. Not my real name. Very best wishes to yourself and Miss Hubnut. There you go. Oh, he's enjoyed the video. So thank you very much, Howard Levert. What? Oh, you're putting them over there. Okay, I hadn't realised it was the system. Uh, this has come from Aldridge. Ooh, what is that? Is there any explanation in there? No, nope. it appears there is no explanation. It looks like a warning light of some kind. Anyone got any clues on that? Hmm. It's a mystery. Uh, maybe we'll do some experimenting with that. Well, thank you, whoever sent that. And if you did send it, maybe you could tell me what it is. Thank you. Customs from uh, Michael Zhang. Multi-purpose rust remover. Inorganic acid. Okay. It's even got a little squirty sender thing on it. I wonder why it's got a customs declaration, given it's come from Middlesex. They're in the same place, I don't know if they're related. Yeah, hmm. 
the mysteries continue. How oh, well. It's a little thermometer stroke humidity checker. Um, 20 degrees at the moment. No wonder I'm feeling a bit warm in my hoodie. And 66% humidity at the moment. Uh, there we go. That's a very handy little thing. Oh, postcard moment. Dear Mr. Hubnut and Miss Hubnut, just a little postcard to say how much I love the videos. Oh, it's always an adventure to watch. What will happen next with the fleet? Yeah, I have no ideas myself. Um, from Mikey in Bournemouth. That looks like a He's shame. recently bought a Lancer estate, winning. Yeah, that's very Hubnut. I, I hope it's um, um, one of the 1980s ones with the diagonal rear lights. But uh, even drawn a little picture of a car. Also, that's, that's that's like a good. Sprite. We had when I was a child. Oh, okay, uh, 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 Miss Hubnut loves caravans. <laughs> this may not end well for he me. You said that very quickly, I know. Yes. <laughs> what have we got in here? Please read first. Ah, oh, this looks like more artwork. Is this the work of Finley? It is from Somerset. Congratulations on the 20th Ellie anniversary. Here is a drawing that I mentioned last time. Ah, the one of Ellie. Right, well, let's see what Ellie looks like. Ellie's sitting outside basking in the sunlight at the moment, although it's fading somewhat. And there she is. Two restorations on, and uh, she's still going. So, thank you, Finley. Oh, got the roof rolled back, just as she has at the moment. In fact, um, I can show you. Um, please look after that fine artwork. Spin you around. There is Ellie, celebrating her Ellieversary in style by um, waiting for us to finish videoing so we can take her home. Uh, move on to the next one. Ah, oh, someone sent me a multimeter. Thank you. Um, I did find mine the other day. Uh, what I'm finding is uh, I'm rediscovering tools I didn't know I had, but thank you for that. Um, you can never have too many multimeters. That is a definite fact. And it means I can leave one here and put one in my toolkit. So thank you. Um, yeah, if, if you're mucking about with old cars, these things are absolutely invaluable. Um, just so you can find out where the electricity has gone. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, no explanation on that one, I don't think. No, I think that's come straight from the company, so thank you very much. Good day, Mr. Hubnut. Please in fi find in clothes a model of Myrtle's older sister. Uh, came across a batch of these and reckoned you'd be one of the few people who would recognise it. Oh. It's derived from the Suzuki Swift and was succeeded by the Matiz. Now, does that mean it's a Tico? Uh, the Tico was actually based on the Alto, the smaller one. It is indeed a, a Dayu Tico based on the Suzuki Alto. Uh, we saw so many of these when we were um, driving back from Romania in the Mighty Dacia. That's lovely. Oh, we've got a little spoiler on the back and everything. Very cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you very much. I will greatly enjoy that. I need to get a model cabinet. You do. Uh, that's the letter that goes with that. Thank you, Robin. Uh, that is uh, lovely. And what have we got here? Oh, well, thought you might appreciate an in-period photo of an Invercar. I took this as a child at some point in the early 1990s in Inverness. Uh, and that's from Stephen, who has a Peugeot 104S and a Mark II Escort four-door 1100L in beige. I think uh, I need to uh, visit this person at once. But there you go. Uh, I'll get that nice and close in case my friend Des is watching, he, he likes to keep an eye on the registration numbers. I can confirm it is an Invercar. It's got the Invercar badge on it. It's got a very questionable door mirror on it as well. And on an S plate, um, that's sort of 77, 78. That is, uh, yeah, that's a very late one. That's towards the end of production. Lovely, thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one who in my childhood was very interested in Invercars, much to my mother's dismay. Look at that funny car. Stop staring at the people. Yeah. Why are you laughing? 
I don't know why she's laughing. Look, it's um, a plug-in fuse tester with fuses. That's a useful thing. Why, why, why are you laughing? Ah, uh, oh. are you laughing at the penguin? P -p -p Pick up a penguin, very tasty. Why would you laugh at a chocolate biscuit? That's highly good food stuff. Um, oh. Um. Hmm. Where are we going here? <laughs> okay. I've been sent some cannabis seeds. Uh, Blue Mystic. These are five seeds, feminized. There we go, from Nirvana in Amsterdam. Well, thank you, whoever has sent me those. Uh, is it legal to grow them? Uh, it's not legal to sell them. Uh, I know that. Uh, hello there, Sir Hubnut. Hope all is well with New Shed. Take care. Uh, uh, right, okay, yes. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do with that. Um, hide them from the children, I should think. Especially the chocolate. Mm -hmm. But thank you. That, that, that will be useful. The other things I'm not quite so certain. But yeah, thank you. It's, you never know what you're going to get in this. Seeds they were locked down. It could be very dangerous for the children get them. Yes, it could be very, very dangerous. What we got here. And uh, Ian, love the content on YouTube, keep it coming. You may already have one, but I saw this and thought you could add it to your collection. I do not. I do not have a brochure for the Citroen GSA. Oh, wow. Um, let's gently get it out of the packet and we'll have a quick look. Uh, wow. I should do a feature where I just look through brochures. Mm. Oh, yes. I mean, I've gone straight to the right page. Look at me. I've gone for the um, rear wiper pornography that is the GSA estate. A very practical wagon indeed. Oh, I was talking about the new 1300cc engine. Developed from the proven and virtually indestructible unit fitted to the GS. The result is a car that can top 100 miles an hour. That is like a challenge. I think we need to take Giselle to Germany. Okay. <laughs> I've already maxed out Ellie on the Autobahn. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting read. Thank you very much. Um, let's find another picture to show you. Oh, there we go. Engine and gearbox. You can't really see them in the car itself. So there you go. Now you've seen them. That is from Nan Jack. Thank you very much. I'm going to put that straight back in the protective plastic and pass that on to my assistant. Stash that one safe. Yep. Uh, this is interesting. There's some bits of cardboard with the address taped to it. <gasps> Wow, the all new Holden Vectra. How on earth has that found its way to the UK? Uh, uh, Peter Nichols. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, it has come from Australia. Yeah. Oh, wow. And there we go. There is a Holden badged Vectra. I did see a few of these and um, it did slightly take me by surprise. But yeah, there we go. What, what engines did they have? Let's go and have a quick look at the back. Uh, two litre Ecotec or two and a half litre V6. I have driven a V6 one. It is a lovely engine. Thank you. I should enjoy reading that at some point. Just just to see if I can spot any differences. Uh, someone was asking about different trim levels. So um, you never know. Maybe one day I'll, I'll find time to get through, go through these brochures and do a bit of a talk. This appears to be a flat cap. I think it is um, hematically sealed. In other words, I can't get in. Oh, and it fits like a glove. So, um, thank you very much, whoever that was. Is A.A. Shidam? So that's come from the Netherlands, not Yorkshire. Oh, there we go. Finally, what have we got here? This is, is this the end of mailbag? This is, yes. Well, there is one, but <gasps> our eyes only. Oh, okay. Oh, more AU wonder. Look at that. Oh, and the Falcon Ute. Now, as unusual as the saloon looks, I think the AU Ute is a thing of great beauty. Uh, he's even got the same hat as me. That's amazing. I think that would yeah, that. just the job for transporting cows. We don't do much of that here, but still, I would like one. Oh yeah, full-on lifestyle mode engage. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would love one of these. I think it would be a wonderful thing to own. Not so good for transporting children. There's only two seats. Yeah. Ah. Um, Lots of watermelons though, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Are they watermelons? Looks like it. They're, they're very large. Wow. Oh, I'm loving that. And there's the XR version. Look at that for a curious nose. It's like um, a, a, a Ford Fairmont tried looking like um, a Toyota Celica. XR8, that's going to be um, powerful. Oh yes, and I did see some of them with this curious rhubar on. Obviously a rhubar, quite an essential thing in um, Australia. Here we go. Uh, the V8 has 185 kilowatts. It do doesn't mention uh, what that is in brake horsepower, because it wouldn't, because Australia doesn't do that. Uh, 412 newton meters of torque is um, a lot though. I wonder how quickly it can drain that 82 litre fuel tank. So yeah, Fairmont and Falcon, they are lovely. I look forward to giving these a proper look. Oh yes, yes, that was clearly me enjoying the lifestyle of New Zealand. Oh yes. Yes, yes. Hopefully not with a lady on the arm. No, no. Uh, Fairmont gear, uh, message display with permanent ambient temperature display. Oh yes, and they've got some of the racy action as well. I mean, what are you doing in Australia now? Now um, the big saloons have gone, what, what's happening with motorsport? Uh, it does make me wonder. So that's an extraordinary and wonderful end to the mailbag. We do have a letter. This is from Adrian Magro in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. I did get up into the um, Blue Mountains. They are um, utterly beautiful. Uh, oh, I met um, Adrian briefly at the St Ives Auto Brunch. Uh, oh yes, you had the Skyline R32, four door, more door, more doors, more pleasure. Uh, I always enjoyed your content. Your new unit is looking fantastic. Thank you. Uh, early next year, I will celebrate 20 years with my AU. Ah, oh, good on you. Uh, seeing as you could not take Becky, Betty home, I thought I'd send you something to start your AU collection. Well, thank you very much, Adrian. That's a, a fine end to mailbag, and we might do the occasional one going forward, but. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I need to stop acquiring quite so much stuff because where's all this going to go? I don't know, but it appeals to my nosy nature. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> I've been waiting some days to film this because Miss Hubnut wouldn't let me do it without her. But there we go. Where did I put my phone? Because we need to get back to the questions if you're um, still with us and haven't run away screaming yet. Uh, no, I need this app. No, no, I don't want to watch the Tuscany hey, race highlights. Shut up! Go, up. go away! I don't care if it's an excellent start. Very interesting, the um, Tuscany Grand Prix. Uh, I think there was uh, a lot of smashing and bashing going on. 62 questions. Oh dear, we're only at 23 <laughs> minutes. You may wish to pause and go and get another cup of tea. I'm taking this hat off because it is um, surprisingly warm. Mm. Uh, there you go. Is that a genuine Dutch hat? Should I have worn it backwards? Am I cool enough? Yes. Not convinced? We'll take the hat off. <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, Shane Marsh. Uh, still hoping for a Hubnut version of what actually went wrong at British Leyland. Yeah, I, I still want to do a video on that, but i kind of thinking that's a discussion that needs guests. So, um, and yeah, there's problems around that at the moment. I would like to very much have a discussion with someone about that. Frank Waltius, um, also Brendan Walker, and probably Chalk, uh, would all like to know what the plans are with Asana. Um, there are no plans at the moment, really. At some point, I will crack on with it. Uh, yeah. Revive it at some point. Yes, yes, I would like to revive it, but um, I haven't really had time to think about it. I need to fix the other cars first. S. Hopkins, what is the worst repair you've done, thinking this will only take a few minutes and it turns into hours? Oh, so not the biggest bodgery. <laughs> the job you think, oh, this will be easy, and then isn't. Oh, I mean, there's loads of them. I mean, um, putting an engine in this Fox, that, that, that was problematic. Uh, I had to buy an engine hoist in the end because it was just such a faff trying to get it in. Uh, so yeah, that was really bad. Uh, and that links into the next question from Paul Baker here. Have you ever thought of repowering Foxham with something a little more power, but still of the period? 1275A series, wash your mouth out. The engine in this car is far superior to an A series engine, far lighter because it's all alloy. So um, yeah, I wouldn't go mini, but uh, end float, um, who provided me with stuff, I, I forgot to mention his channel, so he provided drills and stuff from Ireland. Thank you, Enfloat. 
uh, he says the engines respond well to a supercharger. That sounds a bit more like it, but I'm not sure I want to go that much quicker. I'd have to definitely do something with the brakes because they are terrible. Fixed drive ride fly says, do you think the Vectra will last long enough to become a t-shirt? No, I don't think the Vectra is going to make it to the end of September. More on that later in September. Max Eves, can you do, give us a to-do list of things you are planning to tackle in terms of maintenance of the fleet? <laughs> that implies a level of organisation I just don't have. Stop laughing. Uh, I, I would like to. Uh, someone did say they sent a whiteboard. Nothing has appeared of that nature. Um, but uh, that would be a very useful thing. Um, or I might just write on a big piece of cardboard on the wall. Well, we have it a little whiteboard at home. You can get organised. Yeah, I could borrow that. Um, but the kids like writing stuff on that. So, Not that one. Oh, we got another one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that could work because, yeah, it would be good. You know, like roadkill often do, you have your list of what needs doing. Um, slight danger is I might look at that list and cry. But it's okay because I have an assistant. Yes. 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 Uh, Scottish Car Enthusiasts TV. Can you see the modern quirky citrons becoming hubnut material like the C4 cactus? Uh, I think the fact they effectively killed off the cactus and those wonderful air bumps and just made it a really boring looking um, hatchback, I, I think they could definitely get a bit of a following, those, um, that first cactus. Um, I can't say I'm a massive fan of the cars, but some of them do have three cylinder engines, so that's what a good thing. those lovely little Amis over in France at the moment? Oh, you're obsessed with those, <laughs> yeah. The, little, the brand new little Ami um, uh, electric car. I should post a picture here. Hopefully. Um, yeah, Miss Hubnut likes them. I'm yet to be convinced. Possibly just because I like the original Lamy so much. Uh, Tony Smith, any chance of Myrtle being back on the road anytime in the near future? Uh, the fact she's right up the back there, uh, just beneath the gorgeous sunlight, which is flooding in at the moment, blocked in by Tuck the Invercar. Uh, I think that means that, no, it is not likely. Hold on, I've just dropped my tripod onto my bag. Paul Laters, hello Ian, nice to see you progressing nicely on filling the unit and hiding the floor. Yes, it's great to see Hubnut back doing Hubnut videos. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm very happy to be um, tinkering again. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the 40 year tax and MOT exemption? Well, I've not been a fan of the scheme at all, but currently I'm making great use of that with Took. Took doesn't have a current MOT. Um, it's quite difficult to get three-wheelers MOT'd. Uh, you have to find the right place to do them and they're getting harder and harder to find. So I'm actually quite glad of it, but I do prefer having my car checked over at once a year by somebody who knows what they're going on about, to be honest. So I'm not sure I'm gonna to rush to um, have any of the other cars exempt when they're old enough. They aren't at the moment. So I don't like it, but I have made use of it. So I'm a hypocrite. Retro Nought. Um, British Leyland related reviews dominate the most top 10 viewed videos on your channel. Isn't it about time you owned one? Yeah, it probably is. If you did, which, which British Leyland car would I buy? Um, do, do the Land Crabs count? They, they were in production in the British Leyland era, even if they weren't British Leyland's design. It was kind of inherited from um, the BMC. Um, but I would like one of those. But if we're on about something launched during the British Leyland era, I'm a big fan of the Series 3 Allegros. Uh, I like those very much. Um, and I quite like the Princess, but when I drove one, I ended up feeling slightly disappointed. It wasn't quite as magical as I was expecting. So um, yeah, Series 3 Allegro. I would definitely welcome one of those. Simon Lee says, as a keen hub nutter and biker, I would love to hear your thoughts on bikes. I ride a 1997 Kawasaki, which seems like the perfect hub nut bike. I, I don't know anything about bikes. Uh, I've ridden a couple around fields just for a laugh, but two wheels just aren't my thing. You don't have windscreens and wipers. Um, so um, yeah, I've, I've never been interested in motorbikes at all. Obsessed with cars from a very young age. So sorry to disappoint. Paul Sanders, would you consider doing a photo montage of any photos you may have taken, scenic or otherwise, from your trip down under? Uh, I have been meaning to do uh, not a photo montage, but a video montage of um, the trip overall. I haven't done that yet. I should probably do that, especially as we've got the calendar coming and the 2021 calendar will be Hubnut Goes Global. So it will be some of my favorite photos from being 11,000 miles away from this lady. Oh. Yeah. 
Uh, Tom Carr wants to see more of the Autocar 1990 book. So do I. I was having a breeze through it the other day. Uh, it's a really good read. Road tests were very good back in the early 90s. I also want to buy my first classic car, but I'm worried it will cost the earth. What would be a good starter classic in your opinion? Yeah, that is tricky because I started off with two CVs. Two CVs were dirt cheap when I got into them. Classic minis seem extortionate, as Tom says. They are definitely not cheap. Even the British Leyland stuff has got such a cult following that it isn't cheap anymore. Reliance. Reliance used to be dirt cheap. You could buy a Reliant Robin for 150 quid like 10 years ago, and now you definitely can't. So, yeah, cheap classics. It's worth looking at some of the more obscure 90s, uh, 1980s Japanese stuff, because uh, while some of the more mainstream stuff has really cottoned on in value, some of the other stuff hasn't. Something like a nice Daihatsu, if you can find one, but hasn't rusted away, uh, would be my suggestion. Andrew Newcomb always also asking for a Matiz update. Uh, yeah, she's not going to be back on the road anytime soon, unfortunately. Funds are being diverted into other projects, and I, I don't have enough of them. Phil Seeger, do you think it'd be keeping this unit in the medium or long term, or, or is it um, more more suitable just because of the location? It's certainly a lot easier, isn't it? We've just yeah. popped up here this evening, yeah. uh, rather than having to drive 90 minutes to the old one. It's lovely and peaceful. There's just nothing going on. It's lovely. Um, but, I love that demonstration there. <laughs> yeah, well, it is, but... Yeah, whether it's a long-term thing, I don't know. It hasn't quite got enough space, it turns out, because I've got too many cars. Um, plus, I have this dream of the Hubnut Museum, and it isn't going to happen here. Um, but we'll we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not considering this home forever, but we, we shall see. Uh, MG Bets 1, I know there are no shows at present, but I'd love to see a few more outdoor car meets. Are there any coming up? I'm not booked into any. Um, there was a G rally today down in Surrey. But with the way things are at the moment, I just didn't think it was sensible to drive that far to a show. Um, and, and then gatherings from Monday, um, you're not even allowed them. So, uh, yeah, I thought it's safer to stay at home. Um, so, yeah, nothing coming on that front, I'm afraid. Uh, there may be some smaller events where we go and have a drive out or something, but we'll see. John Malloy, your cars are becoming increasingly rare. According to how many left, there are 31 GSAs of all models on the road. It, it's interesting, there are fewer survivors of the GSA than the GS. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is really. For, for me, I think the GSA is a far better car. Do you see yourself as a kind of conservator? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to save cars that other people think are not worthy. Um, most of my cars were dirt cheap when I bought them. GSA is a rare exception. I've paid an actual four-figure sum for that. Uh, Dave Tong, I'd love to see some work done to tuck the Invercar. What is the plan? Uh, the plan is a bit of a winter refresh, really. Maybe tackle some of the bodywork, get the engine sorted out, because... Um, you should have it, a full complement of windows now. Yes, they're just not all fitted. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, bodywork, fit the windows, take the engine out, give it a bit of an overhaul, maybe. Um, we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, thanks for the opportunity to ask questions again. What is the car with the worst sill rot or botched repair you have ever seen which still had a valid MOT? Um, <laughs> possibly my Dahatsu Sirium, because my MOT tester was convinced the rear chassis legs had been glass fibred on that. Um, I, I didn't dare poke, but I got rid of that car when it became apparent it was not going to pass another MOT. But what a marvellous car that was. Thank you, little dog. Uh, Gar Rage, when we will see you tinkering with an electric car? When they get a lot cheaper? Yeah, there are already a couple of models that may fulfill the criteria. Yeah, the Citroen Saxo and Peugeot 106 electric. There was a Bilingo as well that was electric quite early on. Probably even better, a classic 80s or 90s, the um, City L. Uh, was that a Dutch one? Uh, very strange looking things, but um, yeah, they're, they're not very practical or even an Enfield. I've got a friend who's restoring an Enfield at the moment. Um, so I'm, I would like to go and um, have a play with one of those, I must admit. But I mean, in, in truth, a lot of those cars are pretty awful. And uh, there's problems with the battery tech in the Peugeot 106 and the Bolingo. It's a, a different kind. It's very expensive to do stuff with. So yeah, it can be problematic. All right, Miss Hubner, what, what I just paused while I caught up was just telling me we, we should buy a new Citroen Ami, but they're like about seven grand. No, 
7,000 euros or 7,500 euros. That's about so seven grand at the moment because oh, yeah. the exchange rate's rubbish. Uh, so that's uh, more than twice what I paid for the GSA. And uh, it didn't look like the ideal family transport. I could take one child. Well, uh, maybe. No, no, it isn't going to happen. Uh, Reshead, I'd like to know what the worst car you have ever bought was and if it had even one redeeming feature. Generally, I liked every car I've ever owned. Uh, there was that Isuzu Trooper, but even that had interesting wipers. That's about it. It was a Range Rover I bought. That had been bodged up. Uh, the, when I took the dashboard board apart, the wiring was just a complete nightmare. Uh, it had been hacked about all over the place. That was definitely not one of my better buys. Uh, Ali Mac Mechanical, how's the Vectra B treating you apart from the seats being uncomfortable? Is there anything else you don't like about it? Yeah, I kind of covered that in the recent video. The clutch is doing my head in. Um, but yeah, it is uncomfortable. The ride is terrible. Um, over speed humps, oh, possibly because I'm used to Citroëns. Yeah. This is terrible, but I can forgive this for being terrible because it's a van and it was made a long time ago. Les Palmer, I know that Tuck and Ellie are your main attractions, but I would love to know what you plan to do with the Hugo Sana. Well, I want to fix it one day. Uh, Gone Burko, what has been your least reliable or most frustrating car? Uh, most frustrating and least reliable, probably the Land Rover Discovery I had. Uh, managed to blow a slave cylinder while I was green laning in it. That made gates good fun, because uh, I had to do clutchless driving for the rest of the day. Uh, it, Seized a wheel bearing when I was trying to drive it to North Yorkshire. I got four miles and had to turn around and go home. And uh, when I tried using it for towing, the oil cooler started spraying oil everywhere. So uh, that, that wasn't terrible. That wasn't great, rather. So yeah, probably that one. Chris Weddle, do you think there will ever be another car designed that is as beautiful as the Singer Vogue Series 2? That's a very specific question. Uh, I don't believe there will ever be another car that looks like a Singer Vogue Series 2. They are very nice cars. Uh, and float, here he is again. Have you ever had a desire to own a classic Volkswagen? Not really, no, because I went down another air-cooled route with the um, 2CV. And Volkswagens just seem overvalued for what they are. Uh, the camper vans, yeah, massively overvalued. Uh, I enjoy driving that splitty in um, Australia, but uh, I can't ever see me owning one. Uh, a person whose name seems to be underscores and nothing more. Did you pass your driving test first time? Yes. And how many miles do you do on average a year? That's a difficult one. Um, <laughs> last year I drove an awful lot of miles because um, I did 8,000 miles in the 2CV. Um, this probably did 1,000. I think I did 1,000 in the Invercar last year. Uh, the Matiz did a fair few. Uh, then I went to Australia and did 2,000 miles in a BX, then bought a Ford Fairmont and proceeded to do another, no, 2,000 kilometres I did in the BX, another 6,000, or was it even 8,000? No, 8,000 kilometres in the Fairmont. So, um, yeah, I can do a lot of miles in a year. I don't generally add it up. Uh, Sean Clark, I was wondering if you have a rough timeline for getting the Sarna up and running. No. Or will Myrtle and Foxanne take precedence? Well, Foxanne's on the road, so she definitely takes precedence. And looking forward to more tinkering videos. There will be many. Uh, Paul Plaskva. Hi, stranger. Hope you're okay. Just a fleet update, please. Uh, ooh, fleet update. There isn't a fat lot going on. Foxanne is sitting here. I need to drop her fuel tank. She's leaking fuel, uh, so that needs to happen. Ellie is going to Sparrow Automotive tomorrow, and um, he's lending me one of his personal cars, so that should be fun, because that's got a 720cc engine in it. Um, so he's going to sort out a few things on Ellie. Uh, the GSA, there will be a future video coming up on the GSA. That's all I'm saying on that one. Uh, what haven't we got here? The Vectra <laughs> might well be departing. Um, uh, Took is just sat there awaiting work. Myrtle, Zana, the same. So there you go. It's a very quick fleet update. McCarthy, McCarthy 1. Uh, great to see your enthusiasm and interest for battery electric vehicles a while back. Um, have you considered exploring the emerging markets in the electric space? Yes, I've done an awful lot of looking into it, but all boils down to the fact I can't afford an electric car. Uh, I, I look forward to the, t the time when they become hubnut material uh, because I really like electric vehicles. Um, I just can't afford new ones. 
Alan Lansdale, do you think viewers' comments and how you think we will react sometimes stop you doing the content you want to do? Um, E.g. comments like, that's a BMW, that's not Hubner, I don't want to see that. I don't know if anyone left that actual comment. Some people don't like BMWs. Um, but no, I generally try and do the content I want to do. And that's one of the things I most enjoy. Ohio Hillbilly, have you found a suitable replacement for Oreo bars yet? He sent me a great many with some um, Invercar pulleys. So um, thank you, David, for those. They were very tasty and I ate an awful lot of them. You kept that quiet. That was, that was bef before, before I moved here. Oh, I see. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, people have sent me also. I've got plenty of biscuits, so... Um, Working your way through them. Yeah, slowly but surely, if I can hide them from the children. <laughs> the, the chocolate digestives did not last long. Nick Morton, I had a 99 Reg Vectra B saloon. I found the door tops would flap at 70. I'm curious to know if yours does the same. The 2CV does. I haven't looked at the Vectra. I don't remember seeing yeah, that happen. I don't that. Um, I'm, I'm now, next time I drive on a motorway, and motorways are many miles from here, uh, I will check. Keymar, have you ever tested a car and immediately liked it so much that you want one? Yes. I drove the GSA last year and had to buy one. Uh, that definitely happened. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was just, I have to buy one now before there are none left. Uh, Jay Spears, or Spires, would you like to, to know, would like to know if you intend to give Tux Bodywork a spruce up? Yes, but not too much. Um, I'm, I'm not ruling out farming out that way because I hate fiberglass because you just get resin everywhere. Um, but you can fiberglass, can I get fiberglass. Ah. <laughs> well, you fiberglass the bath once the same yeah <laughs> which is better for me i fiberglassed this patch here and it fell out <gasps> so um, but you have to work upside down under there involves some patience also yeah. yeah i can see the problem here do you have patience yes oh new skills new to the channel fresh uh nigel hancock do you think you'll get a drive in a mattress simca rancho uh be a tolbert rancho over here um yeah I, I would really like to tick that box i uh, need to find the right one uh, Robert Brink, I'm, what I'm really curious about is YouTube, permanent donations, subscriptions, and merchandise. Is it your only source of income? Yes. And can you live off it? Yes, to a point. Um, yeah, that's it. He says you don't need to answer if you don't want to, but I just did. And um, I, I make no secret of it. YouTube is my sole source of income at the moment with the um, merchandise, etc., on the side. Um, so um, we, we seem to just about survive, don't we? Yeah. I wouldn't say we live a luxurious life, but we live a happy life. We do. We do, life. yes. Joe Blurton, what do you think we can do as a community to engage female tinkerers? My young niece is fascinated by cars, brilliant, but I worry about the level of misogyny in car culture. Um, yeah, it is a difficult one, but all we can do is just be more appealing and just talk about the cars and not what they're wearing or how they look. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully that's how we can do it. Um, uh, Miss Hubnut's daughter came out for a run in the 2CV earlier, mm. having the time of her life. She giggled a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think she could be a little petrol head, maybe, but we'll see. And, uh, uh, oh, well, he's a boy, but he sits and watches all the... Oh, podcasts. yes, yes, the 11-year-old, I'm getting into roadkill. And a bit of Cletus McFarland as well. Um, but it hasn't quite made full family viewing yet, has it? I think she's a teenager, I think she would but not to be seen to. Ah, yeah, sometimes you have to play a, a clever game. But, um, I shouldn't say that because she's probably watching. Hello. <laughs> no, she won't be watching this long. We're over half an hour into no, this. It's <laughs> way beyond her attention span. Uh, Throw a favourite word. No, 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 no. That, that would be really bad. If I, if I said poggers, she'd never oh, forgive she would, me. You'd be in yeah. so much trouble if you said poggers. She's invented that word. I don't know why. Richard Haywood. Uh, have you ever been contacted or been offered any assistance, advice or parts from any Sana experts? Yes, a few have been in touch. Um, one in America, bizarrely, I think, um, and a few in Serbia to um, offer assistance. So um, I hope to be able to take them up on their kind offers at some point. Uh, Nigel Rudd would like a toolbox tour. Um, we can probably do that. No, <laughs> I, I try and keep the tools in the toolboxes. It's, it's a new me. Uh, Carnard, another one asking about plans for talk. We've covered that. Emil Pullman, what made you a citrophile? Um, 
I think it all comes back to a book, 101 Great Marks, and it had a lovely picture of a 2CV. Um, that got me very interested in 2CVs, yellow and black Charleston, owned by the Patrick Motor Collection at the time. Other pictures in books, I was just like, these cars are interesting. There was one of a Diane right leaning over. I was just like, these cars are interesting. And then when I had a girlfriend called Shelley at primary school, her dad had a bright yellow Citroen GS estate, and I thought it was the best thing ever. Um, can't, I remember more about the car than about poor Shelley. But um, yeah, th those sort of things have an effect on you. I was just because they're different. And when I, the first time I drove a 2CV was when I test drove my very first one. And I was just like, oh, this is just, this is the life for me. I just love the engineering, the driving experience. Yeah, wonderful. Barry Davis, have you thought any more about new ranges of merchandise? Pens, key rings, coasters, pin badges, etc. Um, also, do you have something in mind you would like to see? Um, yes. I can't really say anything more on that, but there, there will be developments on the store. There will be more stuff coming in time. Um, so, um, yeah, watch this space. Scott Fisher, would you like to ro own a Rover SD1 V8? I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, it's a car I, I should love in theory, but... Um, the interiors do leave me a little cold. Um, so uh, I think I'd rather have a P6. Uh, Adam Toms, if you, if you were to replace Vixella the Vectra, what you, would you replace her with? Uh, I quite like the Vectra as we all need a fairly reliable daily. Yes, I understand that. Um, that question will get answered later in the month. Uh, uh, Julian Knight, a Chrysler or Talbot Alpine would be a great car choice for you, especially if fitted with headlamp wipers. He says SX only. I think the GLS also had headlamp wipers. Uh, they were popular towing cars. Yeah, I, I really like the um, Alpines. Uh, really enjoyed um, the uh, Talbot Solara I drove in the Netherlands last year. Was that last year? That was last year. Crikey. Uh, yeah, fun times. Sam Thomas, are all the cars insured with the same people? No. Most of the fleet insured with Peter James. No, not Peter James. No, I did used to be with Peter James. Peter S. Taylor down in, um, in the south of England uh, because they're one of the few people who cover cars like this for business use. Uh, the Vectra is um, with Eshaw and Haggerty have always insured the Invercar and th their quote's coming very competitive. Their service is good, so uh, I leave the Invercar with Haggerty. I don't really use the Invercar for business. Noel Huggett uh, says... Your friend of mine, Johnny Carpervert Smith, is making a V6 sleeper out of a three-door Allegro. He is, indeed. Uh, he's just released another update on that. Uh, it's a disgusting colour. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, he's put a Rover V6 in it. Uh, well, the Honda engine out of a Rover 800. And uh, some interesting um, engineering there. Go and check it out if you haven't already. Uh, what BL product would you use as a base for a sleeper? And what engine? Oh my gosh. Um, I, 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 yeah, I would love to do a big six, uh, let, let's say an RB26 Nissan engine in a Morris Marina with the running gear beefed up to suit. That would be hilarious. Absolutely. Even if you don't put the turbos on. Yeah, that could be fun. Oh, I've pressed the wrong button again. Hold on. Right, I'm, I'm back on it again. I found the question list. Uh, we're, we're getting near the end now, so don't panic, people. Robert N. Green 6, very much enjoying the latest Chen Green videos and mailbags. Would you dedicate a video to the 1990 yearbook? It looks so interesting. Um, it raises some interesting copyright queries. Um, I don't know if... I, mean, I presume that's allowed. But um, maybe I should speak to Autocar and see if they mind. Uh, well, yeah, I, I would like to have a look for it. Um, we'll try that at some point. Uh, Merzal, are you somewhat drifting away from your power less is more motto? Large BMWs, Vectra 2.2, a 652cc engine in Ellie. Uh, I'd like to see more base motorised cars like a Sierra 1.3. See how these cope with modern traffic. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, I, I like shining a light on the um, underpowered stuff, um, like the um, non-turbo diesels that used to be all the rage. At one point, John Malloy says, I've been spoiled by Betty in New Zealand. It's entirely possible. I do miss that car and the power and the comfort. Ah. 
Yes, it's an interesting question, but no, overall, I, I, I still prefer underpowered cars. A 6522 CV is not exactly powerful. Um, but, though I recently did drive a 2CV, which wasn't mine, the one at the Field of the Dreams. Some people thought that was Ellie. It wasn't. It was my friend's 2CV. Very interesting to take that out on the road and get a feel for it. And Ellie definitely feels more muscular. <laughs> Cauliflower McPug, will the unit ever be tidy? It, it's tidy now. In places. <laughs> uh, I can see floor. Remember, there is no such thing as a silly question. Right, OK. Uh, Howard Levert says, by my standards, it is tidy. You can see the back wall for starters. Well, you could. Um, I've just piled stuff on top of the Yugo. Uh, and the last question, Harp C8, which I think I've already replied to this. Um, yeah, I did. I got slightly carried away. Uh, I may buy a Japanese import mini truck there, right-hand drive. Did you ever review one? Uh, looks like they're becoming popular outside Japan and in the used markets around the world. That's definitely true. That's from Rich and Two Carnivorous Cats in um, California. Ooh, I hope you're all right with all the fires and that over there at the moment. It's all, all a bit exciting. Uh, but yes, I replied, sadly, uh, not, I've never driven one. I want to drive a Daihatsu Midget very, very much. Uh, they are gorgeous. Uh, the K-Class ones are hard work on a long run, but Ace for bombing around town is what I said. I mean, yeah, interestingly, Japanese stuff, especially around the mid-90s, it's now 25 years old. It's old enough to be imported to America. Values are going through the roof on a lot of the um, more unusual stuff. Even Delicas are now heading to America, which is just bizarre because they're all right-hand drive. Um, but then, having said that, I've owned left-hand drive cars, so there you go. But... Uh, yeah, that, that brings us to an end of the Q&A. So we should say thank you very much and thank you for all the stuff. Um, it's just generally absolutely brilliant. And th this, for your eyes only, it really was for your eyes only, but it's, it's just a personal letter with a photo in it. It's um, not for sharing with the world. It wasn't anything dodgy. I was worried we got sent more <laughs> stuff that we should be sent. But um, yeah, thank you. And uh, I think the highlight of this one is definitely the um, AU. Oh, the memories that's bringing back. Oh, if only I could bring Betty to the UK. That would be fun to do one day, I think. But yes, thank you very much. We're going to go because it's getting cold now. And a slightly bit. dark. And slightly dark. So yes, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. <laughs>